Hello, today I'm going to talk you through new functionality in FusionAuth and API to manage API keys. This is useful because previously you could script the creation of users, groups, applications, tenants, and other entities inside FusionAuth, but you couldn't create an API key. You had to manually log into the user interface to do so. Now, with one small exception, that limitation is gone. So this lets you automate the creation of an entire tenant, including a tenant scoped API key without ever logging into the FusionAuth admin UI. The first step to take to use this API is to log into the FusionAuth user interface and then go to settings and then API keys. Next, we need to create an API key from within the FusionAuth user interface. And you may say, well, I thought the whole point was that I could create API keys via the API. That is coming. But the first step is to create an API key that is a key manager within the user interface. So we do that for one main reason, which is that API keys are powerful and we want you to consciously step into setting up an API key that can manage other API keys. We don't want this to be a surprise. So unless you take special actions inside the UI, an API key cannot manage other API keys. So here we're adding an API key. And the most important thing to do here is to check the key manager box. That is the new functionality, and that is what tells FusionAuth, hey, this API key is allowed to manage other API keys. If you don't check that box, then this API key can be used for everything else in FusionAuth, depending on the permissions you give it, but it can't create, update, or delete an API key. So the other thing to note here is that you can specify endpoints for a key manager API key, the same as you can any other API key. And key managers are limited in what they can do. They can't grant privileges or access to tenants beyond what they have. So if I were to limit this API key to a certain set of permissions, then it could create or update API keys to have those permissions, but it couldn't do more. So for instance, if I created this API key with this set of permissions, then it could create other API keys that had any permutation of the application permissions, but it couldn't create API keys that had the connector permissions because it doesn't have those. Because it's the demo, I'm going to actually create a super key that is also a key manager. So this key manager can create API keys with any set of permissions and for any tenants. So we have created the API key that is going to manage our API keys and you can see that it's marked as a key manager. And we need to find the actual API key string. So I'm copying and pasting that because I've written some shell scripts that are going to exercise the API key functionality. Let's take a look at those. So I've created create, delete, retrieve, and update shell scripts. One thing that's important to know is that you cannot, at the current time, get a list of all API keys. You have to know what API key you are manipulating and the ID that you're manipulating. So you're going to have to store that off somewhere. You could store that in your own database. You could store that in the data field of an application or a tenant. But you're going to need to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is create an API key and 
you can see on line four is where I actually called the uh, uh, create endpoint. And I am basically passing some JSON. Interesting things are on line nine, I can set the description to be anything I want. On line 12, I can set the key string to actually be anything I want. So I could have it be my API key ID, or I could have it be some other uh, string that means something to my application. I also could omit that, and FusionAuth would just create a GUID. Lines 13 on are the permissions object. And so this looks very similar to the screen we saw in the UX. You basically have endpoints, and then you have a set of operations that are allowed on those endpoints. So let's go ahead and create. We get back an ID. We get back a insert instant. We also get back the metadata and the permissions that we provided. If we look in the UI, you can see that this new key is there. But let's say that we need to actually retrieve that ID to, to verify that we have what we expect. So we have to again paste the key manager key. And then uh, this is the key thing is most of the operations you're working on are not going to use the key string itself, they're going to use the key ID. So let's go ahead and retrieve it. So you can see we get the ID, we get all this information back. Let's go ahead and update it because now we realize actually we need to not just have the application endpoints, but we also need to have the user endpoints. We need to allow this key permission to the user endpoints because it's going to manage users for us. Again, very similar to the create shell script, but here we're going to update the description and then on lines 22 and beyond, we actually add permissions to update the user endpoint. Let's just say that we don't want this API key to be able to delete users. We just want it to be able to retrieve users. In fact, we don't want it to be able to do anything other than retrieve users. Now we can update the key. Before we do that, let's just double check in the UX that we only have application endpoint permissions. Yep, you can see here, we only have the application endpoint permissions. So we've just ran the update statement. Let's check in the UI to see whether we have any changes. And see that the description's changed and that we now have the get permission on user. And the same is true with the API as well. We can run that retrieve script and we see the changes. Finally, let's delete this API key. Nothing special here same kind of semantics as all the other FusionAuth APIs. 
So we are just going to delete this API key, after which any requests that are made with this API key will fail. We got back at 200. And that indicates that this was a successful deletion. Retrieve doesn't return anything. And if we actually do a retrieve with a verbose curl statement, you can see that we get back a 404 because the key is gone. And if we reload this page, the key is gone as well. So that is the total API key lifecycle. And again, super excited to see what people build with this. The one time you need to log into the FusionAuth UI is to create any key manager API keys. You can't create a key manager API key with the API. You have to use the UI to do so. Thank you.